We're going to do something a little bit different, kind of. We're going to preach right now. We're going to close with some music in a little bit, so I'm going to let them get the slides up. You know, it's important that we are obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. And um, it's, as Stephen said, it's not just here. See, I said that right, Stephen. Yes. It's not just as we're in church, but as we are out of church as well. We need to follow the lead of what we believe the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. And we can worship, and we should worship, not just in church, but everywhere we go. Everything we do, it should be for the Lord. And if it's for the Lord, it is as an act of worship. Even our sister here bringing these beautiful flowers, she brings them is as an act of worship because she's not bringing them for you guys. She's bringing them for the Lord. She's bringing them for the... See, that's power. There's power in that kind of worship. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that this morning. What kind of worship do you have? Do you have weak worship? Or do you have a powerful worship? Listen here to what 1 Peter 2.9 says. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may, there's a reason not only that we're this, but we, there's a, a, a part for us to play because that's true. And it's here underlined. I've underlined that, obviously not in the scripture. May That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness, who called you out of sin, who called you out of the world, who called you out of that life that stunk, that you thought was so great, and brought you to a new life, this marvelous light. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your precious presence again. And I just, I'm basking in it, asking that I don't mess it up or mess up what you have in store, that you would just continue to lead us and, and, and just speak to our hearts this day, that we may know you better. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, it seems that there's been a lot of uh, talk and quite a move over the past several years when it comes to trying to be more authentic in um, having a more authentic worship. How do we worship the Lord authentically? Really, you know? Yeah, if I were to ask you to define what worship, what would you say? What would you say? Don't tell me, just think about that. What would you say if I was to ask you to define worship? Can you worship without emotion? Can you worship without thinking? Can you worship without feeling or attitude or having some kind of an intellectual, spiritual focus? Or maybe we need some kind of combination of all of these. Can we worship God without some of these things, this stuff? God must be very concerned about this topic because this isn't just a modern age today, modern, contemporary. Look up in your dictionary, contemporary means today, modern. It's not just a contemporary issue. Jesus was even concerned about this, and even his father God was concerned about this topic because it's mentioned well over 200 times in Scripture. 200 times, that's a lot of times. So that thinking, my thinking is, well, that must be kind of important. Otherwise, maybe I'd see it once. But if I'm seeing it over 200 times, then it must be rather important. So throughout the Bible... We can see that adoration of the living God, not the dead God, not the sticks, not the stones, but the adoration, the lifting up his name, the praising, the worship of God is a common theme, and it is very important for us even today. In fact, one of the reasons that God saved us was to place an emphasis on establishing a worship team. You know, I, I, it's kind of like a little pet peeve I had and uh, uh, when I think of a worship band. I don't like the word band. I mean, I don't care. It's, a good, it's all right. But, you know, this is a, a worship team. This is a choir. They're a team of people. You know, we're not here to perform. Sandy Patty might have performed. I don't know, but I bet you she was worshiping too in that place yesterday. There's performances, and there's nothing wrong with good Christian performance. 
but that's not what I'm about, and that's not what we come together on Sunday mornings about. It isn't performance. It's about worship. It's about lifting up the name of God, and we need to be a team. So I like the thought of a worship team, a praise team, not a worship band or praise band, but a team. It takes all of us to do this, and that word is important, I think. And we need to remember that one of the reasons he saved us was not only to praise him now, but to praise him for eternity. It isn't just about now. Look here, if you don't believe me. Psalms 145, 1 through 2. I will praise you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name. Did you know we could bless his name? I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless your name and bless you. And I will, I might not, no, I will praise your name forever and forever. Later down in the same chapter, verse 21 of, of 145 in Psalm, it says, My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh shall bless his holy name forever and forever. I've got great news. We don't have to wait to die to do it. We could do it right now. And the scripture that we read, the first scripture, 1 Peter, he says, we're here to proclaim the praises. We can show the goodness of God by worshiping him and proclaiming his praises now. And you've been doing a great job of that this morning. As we, my thoughts are, as we are heading, I can't believe I'm saying this, towards Christmas already. As we're, can you believe it? This is like end of August, right? As we head towards the season of remembering Christ's birth, there's also something there that I can't forget. We also need to remember that he died. And we also have to remember he didn't stay dead. And we also have to remember that when he rose again, he went to the right hand of the Father, and he's interceding for you and me. And we can't forget that he sent his Holy Spirit here, and we can't be afraid and don't need to be afraid about talking about his Holy Spirit because he sent his Holy Spirit to live in us. In us. Do you get that we've got the mighty God's Holy Spirit living in us? Well, that's something to praise, not something to praise about. There's nothing that we should be praising. Praise the Lord, we've got, I hope I said that right. You understand what I'm trying to say. I hope so, because I don't have a clue. All right. We should be praising the Lord when we've got that kind of power inside of us. The creator of the universe has said, let there be and bang, there was. Big bang, maybe, I don't care. He did it, that's what's the truth. As we head towards these seasons, let's not forget what it is that our God has done for us. It's crucial to have an accurate understanding of what it means to truly worship God. He loves us. He loves us. Remember what it is that he did for you. He brought me out of the deep, my clay. He set my feet on the solid rock to stay. He puts a song in my happy soul today. And I don't remember, but glory, hallelujah. Glory for what he's done for us. These days, it seems like there's so many different styles of praising God out there as there are different denominations and churches out there. They're everywhere. There's all kinds of style. There's a style out there that you're going to like, and there's a style out there you're not going to like. There's a style that will ring your ears. Woo! And there's a style that will bring a quiet peace to your heart. You know what? They're all okay. Every style. We aren't to judge the style. So where do we start trying to figure this out? Where do we start? Well, there's one passage I think that we really need to think through clearly. Anyone who wants to seek and bring true worship to the Lord. It's in the Old Testament. Go figure. The Old Testament has it for us. Isaiah 29, 13. Notice carefully what God says. And so the Lord says, these people say they're mine. 
They honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. We found the key. It's the heart. Their hearts are far from me. And their worship of me is nothing but man-made rules learned by rote. Rote is repetition. Rote is routine. It's conditioning. You know, it's just going through the motions and, and, and not meaning it. It's doing it just to do it because I'm supposed to do it. And not meaning it. Has no meaning to it. You know what? That's wimpy worship. I ain't, excuse me, honey, I ain't about wimpy worship. I ain't about playing games when it comes to the church. I ain't about doing anything but staying focused on what I believe and what the word says to be true. I'm here to be focused on the truth and to move and to preach as I feel and sense the Holy Spirit moving me to preach. Sometimes it's good stuff. Sometimes we go out here feeling like, woo, these are happy, clappy day. That was a good message, preacher. And then sometimes they're, they're hard messages. And we go out like, oh, my goodness, I just got eaten up alive in there today, you know. Sometimes they're in between. But if it's true, it's true. How can you water down truth? Well, the world's doing a really good job of trying to do that. We as the church can't do that. We are called out we are called out to do what he wants us to do. And wimpy worship isn't part of that, at least according to his scripture. So if we really truly want to go back to the heart of worship, you must begin with you and your heart. You and your heart. When we're talking about worship, it starts with you and your heart. It's about God, but it has to start with you. Your desires, your heart, your lifestyle. On the outside, people may see you bow your head. People may see you raise your hand. People may even see you dance in the aisle. I love my sister back here. She just, you know, she can't sit still. She's just praising the Lord, right? Man, people could see that. People could see you shout to the Lord. You know, that's all fine and good. There's nothing wrong with that. But the bottom line is, where is it coming from? Is it coming from your heart? I hope so, and I believe so. If it isn't, we've got a problem. Because according to Scripture, that's rotten. That's rotten deception. And you know what? Christ sees right through it. Maybe we don't, but Christ sees through your heart. And he sees where your heart is. If it's in the right place or if it's in the wrong place. He sees it. To have your heart in the right place and to truly worship God is to meet at least three conditions. And I promise I'm not going to keep you long. I'm going to go through them kind of quickly. But the first condition is this. Show up. Show up and join in. I'm going to say something I'll probably regret later. My wife is here this morning and she's ill. Why is she here? Because she shows up. Why do I come sick? Why does Stephen come sick? Why do you come sick when you're sick? To make everybody else sick? Oh. Well, if you're deathly ill, then you need to be not here. Don't get me wrong, but if you can be here, you need to be here. How easy it is to come up with excuses not to go to church. Oh, my big toe, my back. Oh, these, I'm not saying these reasons aren't real. I'm not saying that or I'm not taking away. But if we're going to worship God, we got to show up. We can worship him out there, yes, but God calls us for more than just worship out there. He calls for corporate worship. And to do that, you got to show up and you got to join in. Show up and join in. The Bible knows nothing about Christians going through life alone. And again, don't get me wrong. When you're sick, you're sick. Please don't come. I don't want to be ill if you're really ill. I don't want to get sick. But we need to show up when we can. Because the Bible doesn't talk about being alone. Only except to be in the closet with him and have our devotions with him, and talk to him. That's important. But there's nothing about in the Bible about being a confined Christian. 
There's no such thing as confined Christianity. If your times of praising God are limited to only your closet, then you're missing something. You're missing a blessing. You're missing about being with God's other brothers, uh, us brothers and sisters and God's other children and lifting up his name. You're missing a blessing. And the devil's good at trying to rob from, steal from you, and he'll do all he can to do that. You're missing a blessing of what corporate worship, only corporate worship can bring. It says in the Old Testament, when they went to the temple, boy, when they were going to praise, they had the tamarines going and, and they're just a dancing and they're saying, before they got to church. Think about that. They came in prepared. How about you? My car's pretty quiet when we come to church in the morning. We're totally meditating, totally meditating for 50 minutes. It doesn't take us more than 50 minutes to get here, usually 45 because Tammy's driving. <laughs> That's nothing, but spend 50 minutes with the Lord. See what that will do. They come in prepared. Take time to prepare yourself for the most important part of the week. Work is important. What you do is important. The most important part of the week is right here, right now. Join in with the Lord's Holy Spirit to get ready, to get ready to praise and worship the King of Kings. Okay, condition two, make up. I wanted to say shut up. <laughs> make up and shut up. But no, make up and let go. Forgive and forget. Matthew, this isn't me, Matthew 5, 23 to 24. So if you are offering your gift at an altar, at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something or your sister has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go first to reconcile to your brother, to your sister, and then come off of your gift. You know, because if you do it any other way, your gift isn't accepted. This isn't accepted if there's a problem in the heart. This isn't accepted if there's a problem in your heart. This isn't accepted if there's a problem in your heart. Too often we forget that there's a key aspect of praising God. You cannot suddenly offer a, a praise to God and harbor bitterness towards another person in your heart. It doesn't work that way. Don't go to the church and play sweet when you're sour on the inside. That's what my grandma used to tell me. Don't go to church and be all sweetie and be so sour on the inside. You've, you've already destroyed your even chance of bringing true worship to the king. So ask for forgiveness because we don't want to worship in bad taste. We want to be acceptable, not unacceptable to God. So ask for forgiveness and let go of your anger. Let go of your bitterness. Let go of your sin. Then get ready. Get ready to praise and worship the King of Kings. Condition three, look up and focus on. Pay attention and focus your heart on God. Focus your mind on God. Don't focus on me. Don't focus on Stephen or the piano playing. Don't focus. Focus on God. Don't worry if the praise team and the worship leader is off key. Don't worry if the vocals are flat and the person next to you has like way too much perfume or cologne on. Don't worry about those things. The enemy wants to distract you from bringing honor and praise to God, and he will do all he can to do so. Do you know why? Because authentic, real, true worship is amazing. And what it brings is it brings transformation. Something happens inside of us. We begin to be transformed and transformed for God and transformed for good. And the devil doesn't want anything to do with you being transformed. He doesn't want anything to do with good. He doesn't want you changed. He wants you to be the same. He doesn't want you giving praise to God. Now, if Satan can divert you from turning your eyes on Jesus, he's already won the battle for the week. Sunday is the beginning of the week. 
I don't like some of the modern calendars we have out there that has Monday being the first day of the week. No, Sunday. The day that we come to worship. Now listen, believe me, there's spiritual battle going on inside the church walls just as much as there's going outside the church walls. We got to beat these. We got to win these battles. We can't lay down. We can't have wimpy worship. We can't, because oh, I might hurt someone's feelings, not say the truth. Jesus said the truth. And he hurt a lot of people's feelings. And he changed a lot of people's lives. The devil knows this. He knows what worship is. He knows it probably more or better than we do. So he's going to do all he can to prevent that. So he's incredibly uh, uh, effective. He's incredibly effective. I think I said that right. Uh, getting our focus off of God and getting it on things. Oh, my goodness. Preach, you better hurry up. My roast is in the oven. And, you know, I've got, um, oh, we're having a picnic today. You know, the, the, you know we, it's so easy to get our focus off of God. It is easy, even for me. But we need to fight against that. As our mind wanders, we do our best to bring it back and focus on the king, the king of kings. May it be my, your prayer and your purpose to continue, to continue to come to church, to continue to worship God, and he be the singular focus of why you come. Don't come for your brothers or your sisters. It's good to talk to them and hang out with them, but don't come for them. Come for God. Don't come for the singing, whether it's good or bad. Come for God. Don't come for the preacher, whether he's good or bad. <laughs> come for God. And he will be glad you did. And you will be glad you did because, you see, you're getting even more ready. You're getting ready. You're stoking the fire. You're getting ready. Now watch your duty to glorify God become an authentic experience, something that nobody can take from you. Nobody. Wait and see that the Lord is good and how he inhabits the praises of his people. You see, it's not duty, it's desire. We do it because I want to. I desire. Woo, see, that's why the people were singing in the Old Testament and dancing and playing their tambourines as they were getting ready to go to the temple. Why? Because God is there. Woo-hoo, we're going to see God. We're getting ready to praise the Lord. Look at here, look at here. Yeah, we're going. And everybody, neighbors included, so look at them crazy people. They're going to the tabernacle again. Yeah, they are. What's your neighbors think? <laughs> There's no wrong way to worship if, hear me now, no wrong way to worship if you're truly praising him, if you're lifting up his name, if you are glorifying God and bringing glory to his name, there's no wrong way to worship. Styles will come and they will go. I don't know if you remember, I remember they fought to bring a piano in our church. Come on now, I'm 50, oops, one, two, oh my goodness, almost 52. I remember, I remember, piano in our church? No. And some of the old timers said, well, why? I said, why? You know, I'm a kid, you know. Well, why? Well, we always sing a cappella in this church. I said, huh. And I got in trouble even as a kid. I was a rascal. What does it mean then in the scripture about bringing in your string instruments and all that and glorifying God? No, you shut up, young man. You know, before long, we had a piano. After that, we had an organ. You know what? Get ready, hold on. These are passe. You know what we have now? We have a keyboard. Now, is that something, mean something wrong with these? No. But are they sacred cows? Better not be. Because who are we here to worship? The piano? The organ? Or God? So bring that guitar. You can play an instrument, bring it. And if you're using it for the glory of God, it's worship. It isn't the instrument. It's the worship. Ooh, I got quiet on that one. Did I? <laughs> That's okay. We're not moving that off the stage just in case, you know. Not yet. You want to buy a piano? I've got one at my house. Gotcha. <laughs> styles come and styles go. It's not about styles. It's about worship. Think about this, okay? 
Our styles and clothing, man, they change like weekly, it seems like, at least yearly. All right, ladies, think about hairdos. All you with short hair, you're going to hell. That's what I heard growing up. Ladies, you need to, man, we also, what's that? Carly Simon, remember how long her hair was? Y'all should have hair down to the feet by now. You see styles come and go. Do you remember the old two-foot honeybee? My mom had one of those. As kids, we like, like flatten it, try to flatten the thing down, man. There was, you could have poked your eye out with that thing. Styles come and they go. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? They come and they go. They don't stay the same. They just don't stay the same. What does it matter if I have long hair, even me, or short hair? What does it matter? If I have tattoos or don't have tattoos, what does it matter if my heart is right with God? Authentic worship. You know, if all this wasn't true and personal style was important and the style of worship mattered so much, if it was really true, if it really mattered that much, we'd all look like the first Christians. And we'd be doing like they were doing but we're not. We get it. And we need to continue to get it because it doesn't stop with you. Culture goes on. It moves on. Society moves on. We don't bend to their will or their way, but we don't let their will or way stop the progression of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Worship needs to be the most important thing. Not to do it because that's how they did it, we're doing it this way because this is how we believe it should be done. And the way we're doing it is attracting others to Christ. And there's where it really matters. We're getting people coming and praying at the altars and getting saved because we are making a difference because we're doing things differently. And it isn't meaning that we're forgetting anybody. You heard my saying, the cradle to the gray. We don't forget nobody in this church. We can't. No youth are more important than the senior citizens, and no senior citizens are more important than the children. Oh, come on now. We're all important in God's eyes, every single one of us, and we need to do our best to minister to all those. I know I've lost you back there. Let's go on. If this wasn't true, I already said that. There's nothing wrong with the way that we worship as long as, again, we're truly worshiping him, we're praising his name, we're lifting up his name, and we're bringing glory to him. Those are the bottom lines. If my heart is right, I can do all those things in any style. It doesn't matter. Jesus didn't leave us an order of worship. Here's how you do it. He didn't do that. He didn't give us that. But he did command us to bring honor to his Father God and bring glory to God. We do this by being obedient, by worshiping, and by praising. It's the heart that matters. Am I being obedient? Am I really being obedient to the leading of your spirit, Lord? Am I being obedient to your word and what your word says? Have I been forgiven? Have I asked for forgiveness? Am I truly focused in on you, Lord Jesus? That is, as long as you praise him with pure motives, which comes from the heart, you are okay. Don't let someone say you're doing it wrong, Miss Linda, because they don't get it. Don't let them say you're doing it wrong, Bernie, because they don't get it. Don't let them say, let them say you're doing it wrong, Emily, because they don't get it. Are you really worshiping him with pure motives? You get it. It doesn't matter on the how, as long as you do. I can't worship without emotion. <laughs> I can't worship without thought. And if I do, it's wimpy worship. I want to worship powerfully. And I want this church to worship powerfully. As much as worship and praise can be a feeling, it's more of an attitude. It's more of a spiritual focus. So charge ahead and give these three a try. Go on. Show up. Join in. Make up. Let go. Look up and focus on. I'm here to praise God, the creator of the universe. I'm here to praise Jesus Christ the Savior of my soul. I'm here to praise the Holy Spirit for letting me know that they are real. The Trinity is real and they're alive. I'm here to worship the King of Kings. I'm here to worship. Are you ready to worship? 
Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to lift up the name above all names? And let's join in together. Let's go through this thing and let go of the past. Let's have our focus on Christ and on eternity, keeping the prize ahead of us. Let's do it right now, Brother Stephen. Come on up here. Remember what God has done for you. Remember what God has done for you. Let praise and worship be authentic. Praise and worship and lift up the name of the Lord this morning as we sing a couple more songs. Come on now.